So this is a short code, right, that I need. Yeah, right? but, okay. Essentially, to present what I want to do here. So, then, oh, why does it move that? Right. Okay, it doesn't go to that, you know? Right. Right. Kind of force. Okay, okay. So there are things I would like to do during this act and discuss during this act. One is a uh, presenting semantics in RDF. One is about user interaction on RDF knowledge bases, and the other one is about the implementation and technology, especially about path resources. So I will mention a few projects I'm interested in in the end, but I would like to show I mean, how things fit together in the context of the project that we're working on. It is a five days. It is a hospital interaction with the base. Okay, so why five days? So this is a small database that I've done when I'm working in the research, and I thought it was an ideal use case to test semantic technologies because, first of all, it's an information hub. So it's a database of mutation to disease in organism, and also in the um, contain information on the effect of chemicals, how these chemicals effect is altered due to gene mutation, pathogens, and so on. So it connects a lot of different kinds of information. And at the same time, it's a UTIC database. So actually, I think that UTIC databases are probably the ones that would benefit most from the semantic web. Because it's an easy platform to integrate the information. So this is just an example of information in this database. The chronic mutation regime and the pathogen affects the activity of the chemical in the disease process, which involves host and pathogen. Okay? So it's pretty complex information yeah, to model. So the idea, okay, let's try to see whether with semantic web technologies we can actually do something with this database. No? So I started with a pretty classical approach to database, I did the mapping to RDF with visual view. Then I did some mapping of the URIs to go in pro and other resources. And then I put it into part of the endpoint. No? And then the question is, does it do something? Does it, is there some real benefit? Okay? Like, uh, does it actually improve the possibilities of people, of the end users, to analyze the content of this database? Okay? So here is the list. Before it was being generated, it's a hub. Now we put it in this sort of link in the world. And we see something changed in practice for users. And the answer is actually not really. Okay? So the first thing that all people ask is actually, what is the schema? How do I build it? And this is somehow a bad thing, because you think, OK, we have all this stuff to machine the information. And then if people want to put in a complete schema, they are basically at the starting point. But I think there are a set of problems for which um, it's not easy to use this kind of resources in RTF that I divided into semantics, queries, and technology. So one, one, one thing is that, uh, so where we put on top of semantics, and where we say what this RDF means, you know, we are exporting this data about host pathogen interaction, you know, what is an interaction, where do you define it? Traditionally, you would define it in ontologies, as some sort of interpretation on top of your RDF uh, knowledge base. Now you export everything in RDF, and then you start with an ontology to construct, to assign some meaning to the state. But I think there is a lot of semantics can, which can be already expressed in RDF itself. And I think this is something that matters for a set of reasons. So, these are some of the reasons that I can think of. One is that uh, this information is on the web. Now we are exporting this information from five days on the web. And there is actually no control of its usage. So some people will just take this RDF and mesh it up with their information and just use it. So if you don't include some semantics in RDF, there is no guarantee that you just use our ontology or something. There is another aspect of this web is about easy publishing of information. So like in this case, I mean this is a resource that needs to be exported to other users. We don't really have time to wait to define a comprehensive ontology. So people want to export it now. It's either RDF or XML. So we have to use what we have now. And another aspect is that there are many use cases that actually don't work for ontologies, like graph analysis. I mean, a typical use of this uh, information in this database from users is actually to look for clusters of interacting genes. So this is the use case that can be already addressed at the RDF level. No? So the issue, the issue is then how to define best practices for an optimal RDF representation 
which can capture a range of, let's say, web-based or draft-based use cases, and which can also facilitate the construction of application-specific encoders. So with this kind of idea in mind, I went over this uh, Friday's project. And so the thing is, what is needed for an effective RTF export? Actually, the, the, probably the most the thing is something that is not even in the RTF world, is quality of information provided. Okay? I mean, the thing is that users of uh, this information we provide in RTF uh, have a very limited know-how of the data source. Okay? So it's up to the provider to embed uh, all that they can in RTF. And by this, I mean, they need to embed more semantics that is present in the original database, database schema. For instance, there is a lot of semantics that is actually in, uh, in curation manuals. If you read the curation manual for curators, for this uh, database, they actually specify when to change gene identifiers. Okay? So they have a pragmatic definition of your eyes. And this is something you should include directly at the RTF level. And there is a lot of background knowledge and so on. So in this uh, experiment, if you want, the main thing in exporting the, the content of this database to RTF has actually been to redesign the database itself. Okay, so to define a new schema which was defined to embed more information to be then represented in RTF. So I'm going now over, I mean, this is a very complex schema that I cannot really describe in detail now, but I want to go around a few issues in a few points. So one is how do you work on the conceptualization of this fabric? So this fabric is a, a hospital interaction database. And if you saw the original schema, there was a big table called interaction. Okay, so now what is an interaction? It's very difficult to define in this, in this case. Interaction is something that was linking actually a gene to an effect of a pathogen on a host. So, Sometimes even linking the gene to a chemical and this effect of the total cost. So in the schema design essentially, the idea was to keep it simple, so to define information only in terms of basic concepts. So in the new scheme essentially, uh, all, the, all the tables that carry some attribute, that carry some real information, are actually relative to simple things like somehow intuitively understandable concepts like process, organism, biological entity perturbations and the concept result. So the conceptualization is basically expressed in terms of simple statements. Okay? Which we may think that could facilitate the building of ontologies and also the alignment of this kind of information to other resources. Another example is about the definition of your eyes. No? So it's tempting somehow, I mean you have genes and you think that all the issues mapping this gene your eyes to some your eyes schema, but if you look at the information in five days and how it used, uh, there are actually different ideas for genes. And actually there are three ideas for genes that have a different have an interesting um, implication on identity. So for instance there is a reference, a reference, a reference physical gene. I mean that is a gene biologists refer to where they talk about the database identifier. Okay? And they know very well which is a commitment of it. Like this is a general information, general annotation, it's not necessarily specific to the case I'm starting now, but it's background knowledge that we want to know, okay? And then there is an experiment specific gene. So, I'm describing the observed interaction with the perturbation on a gene and the phenotype, and this gene has its own URI, but, I mean, you don't basically cannot, can never say that this gene is equivalent to another gene in the design of your RTF, so at the URI level, because this is essentially a deduction to me for a specific analysis. So the equivalence of your eyes at the experiment specific gene is actually something that you only deduce. So for a given uh, use case, you can see under which condition you consider two genes the same, and then move on. And then, okay, this is more specific to the schema, there is also a concept of the gene as after it has been altered, in order to avoid some ambiguity and so on. So these are a few ideas why you can embed this kind of semantics if you want, in, in this case, in the schema, the directly must to RTF. And, and then there is a set of, let's say, best practices that are pretty common sense. So of course you want to map uh, terminologies to common ontologies, you want a coherent approach to represent the nodes missing the negative information and the like, and also you want to avoid the RTF constructions 
may you change the meaning if only subset of statement is taken. So in case of negative information, the other one has not as a property, rather than has something and then attach not. Okay, ah, that's me? Well, okay. <laughs> so in brief, uh, how does the overall things work? We get five days, now it is a new schema, we map it to the short queue, okay? So then we have uh, essentially a system, we add an inference engine on top of it to uh, rise the level of uh, you know, abstraction, so the simple property like the genus phenotype, and then we provide it to users through some interface like FedFinder to find relations automatically and so on. So to cut this short, this had a good reception, people is happy with it, if we have a easy way to query information and so on, but there is some limits, and the limits are essentially that uh, there is a limit that lead to triple stores and usually you don't know actually what is inside, when they're updated, and all this kind of stuff, which is basically very really difficult to use this technology in practice in production. Okay? And that's it. I mean, the last slide, let's say, so if you look about <laughs> The, how much is, I mean, how many paper cite semantic web in uh, PubMed is actually decreasing the number of paper cite in semantic web, right? So I think that the semantic web is a kind of technology, so unless we start with some uh, simple solution that works for real, now, I mean, uh, it won't go that far. There are a set of competing uh, technologies that are taking place, I'm sure. Okay, that's it. I'm interested in this uh, kind of process if you are in the hackathon. Best practices to represent RDF, visualization system, and work on service with the context, and we'll make more of some database resources like Firebox.